Hello and welcome to this video about the electrolysis of aluminium oxide. In previous videos we looked at um, more simpler electrolysis setups um, whereby you had the electrolyte solution with a positive and negative electrode sitting in there and the positive ions move to the negative electrode and the negative ions move to the positive electrode. Now the principles are still the same for the electrolysis of aluminium oxide but I wanted to do, it, to do it in a separate video because the setup looks completely different. So first of all the two electrodes sticking in the top are actually both pos positive. So if you look by the pluses here they show you that both of those are positive electrodes. And importantly they're normally made out of carbon and I'll come back to that later on. So they're carbon electrodes and the negative electrode actually sits around the outside so you can see it running all the way down here and along the bottom and over here so the negative electrode runs all the way around uh, the outside. Now aluminium is a really useful metal to us it's really important that we can extract it but the problem is it requires loads of energy because if you remember as a rock you can't um, use electrolysis you have to have it in some sort of molten liquid form to be able to separate the ions in that compound to be able to separate the aluminium from the oxide so if you were to heat this up because aluminium's got an extremely high melting point it would take loads of energy and loads of money to make it molten so instead to get around that they dissolve it in something called cryolite so they'll still need to heat it up but not to as high a temperature as you would if you were just purely making the aluminium oxide molten so they dissolve the aluminium oxide in cryolite and then they can use that as the electrolyte. Now importantly what this does, and you need to know this for your exam, is that it reduces the energy needed for the electrolysis of the aluminium oxide and therefore reduces some of the cost needed to extract that aluminium. So if you're thinking about um, where the aluminium is going to go and where the oxygen is going to collect, then you should remember that this is an ionic substance with a metal and a non-metal. Metals always form positive ions and non-metals um, generally form negative ions. So aluminium here is going to be positive so it's attracted to the negative electrode so here you'll have Al3- minus al aluminium ions collecting and actually it will run off out of the bottom here as molten aluminium at the bottom and then you can collect it off and, and cool it down and use it for building airplanes and such like. The other ion that we've got in here is the oxide ion so there you've got the O2 minus ions in the electrolyte and they collect at the positive electrode now I said I'd come back to that word carbon because the positive electrodes are made out of carbon but actually what happens as you probably have, have guessed is that the carbon reacts with the oxygen to produce carbon dioxide so the oxide ions that you've got going there reacts with the carbon and actually carbon dioxide is let off as a gas at these positive electrodes. Now what this means is these electrodes have to be replaced so the positive electrodes will need replacing. So they might ask you why they need replacing the exam and you'd answer because the oxygen reacts with the carbon and the carbon dioxide is released. Okay, so that in essence is the electrolysis of aluminium oxide. So just bear in mind when you get a diagram showing electrolysis do try and really pick out where the electrodes are and what's happening and in this case remember the importance of cryolite. 
If you found this video useful, then please press the like button below and subscribe for further revision videos.